Oh, I guess anything's possible. Um, you know, I guess when you take yourself back to um, that point in time, it, it feels like a, a long way away, and uh, you make a few small steps forward, and you work pretty hard together as a group, and next thing uh, you know, you might find yourself here, and it's obviously a, a really special occasion tomorrow, and you know, to be to be involved in a, in a World Cup and representing your country, let alone to turn up here at the, the home of cricket and be involved in a final is, is pretty special. Okay. Kane, um, you and Gary and I suppose everyone else on the team always talk about how it's just one game at a time and Gary yesterday was saying that this is no different to any other game of cricket but how on earth can you kind of go in, you know, that must be really hard to go in with that mindset when you know that you're playing England in the World Cup final at Lords. How do you do that? Yeah, um, you know, I think any game that you play in, you, you deal with different distractions and naturally in a World Cup final, they, there brings other distractions and there's a lot more people here today and perhaps that, that may be one. Um, but there's obviously another, uh, you know, bunch of other things where um, you know, all different thoughts can, can go through your mind of uh, potential realities. But um, certainly where Gary and, and myself and, and all the group come from, it's, it's keeping your feet on the ground and looking to play the sort of cricket that you want to play to give yourself the best chance, regardless of whether it's a, a semi-final, a, a round-robin game or, you know, fortunate enough now to, to be in a final at the end of the day, it is still a cricket match um, where both teams are looking to, to go out and implement their plans as best they can to give themselves the best chance. Stand up front. Can you tell us about the importance of first 10 overs? Because if Jason Roy and Bairstow can stay longer, then they are really damaging the opposition. Yeah, those two uh, have, have been fantastic throughout this whole competition and, and prior as well. And um, you know, I, I think we mentioned that, uh, before that there's a whole... Uh, well, there's a number of other parts to perhaps playing in a, in a World Cup final, um, but you know, there is a huge amount of respect for the match winners that they have within their side, obviously at the top of the order and, and throughout. Um, but the focus for us is very much about the cricket that we want to play and the performance that we want to put on the board. And if we do that, then I think we've seen throughout this competition that, that anybody can beat anybody. Okay. And then Liam, do you subscribe to the theory that it's better to have played in the final um, than not? And apart from the obvious in terms of you know the result, what 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 do you sort of hope to do differently this time around? Um, yeah, well, there's a whole heap of different things, I suppose. We were in a, a different part of the world on on a different surface against a different opposition, and both sides are very very different from four years ago. So it's kind of hard to. Uh, compare those times, um, you know, whether having had experience in a final or not is a, is a good thing. I think any final you get the opportunity to play in is a, is a really positive thing. Um, yeah, but, but at the same time, as we know in this game, nothing promises. So it does come down to uh, putting a performance on the board that, that gives us the best opportunity to, to win. And, um, you know, both sides will be very much looking to do that and, and trying to treat the game as, as any other game. Um, but, you know, it's a, a really exciting, special occasion, and I think both teams will be savouring the opportunity to be where we are at the moment. Are, are you any more relaxed at all this time around? Um, oh, four years ago, how did I feel? Uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just very different. Um, we have a very different group. A, a slightly different, I guess, vibe and ethos and how we operate. But you know, at the same time, there's a, a real commitment to that, which is a, a really positive thing. And it's, it's held us in good stead up until this point. And so you know, the focus for us is about the cricket that we want to play and, and we want to be proud of, uh, of the performance that we put on the board. What, uh, are you a person who loves winning or you hate losing? Which one of you <laughs> are you? And as a captain, four years back, you're just a player. How, you, how, you, how do you relate to losses, especially in the evenings? Does it take time for you to record, or you just move on as a captain in the losses? Um, yeah, I try not to get too sort of caught up in the, the results and hopefully not too emotional about just the outcome and maybe look at it with a little bit more reason and, and where we perhaps could have improved and, and where some things that maybe were out of our control had an impact on the game and then try and move on from that uh, as quickly as possible. So. Um, there's always 
more to the picture than just the end point, um, and that is sort of the focus for us as a team. It's actually putting our efforts into into the moment, how we want to operate uh, as a group, um, and it, it may well be very different to uh, to other sides and how they operate, which is fine. But you know, we trust in it, and it's important that that we do, and and we look forward to to tomorrow. Um, treating it with uh, a huge amount of respect because it's not very often you get the opportunity to, to be out in a, in a World Cup final, but very much focus on what we need to try and achieve. Oh, I prefer winning than losing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's probably the best way to say it. But you know, there's always um, any experience that you have is, a, is an opportunity to learn and sometimes tough experiences, um, being on the wrong side of results, um, can can sometimes slap you in the face and give you a glaring lesson, and if you ignore that, then I don't think that's a, a positive thing. So, treating both of those th the outcomes with with respect and, and trying to learn from them to be better as a group and as an individual, I think, is the best part. Hi, uh, Faye Barker, ITV News. I know, as has just been said, um, you were second in the last final. How would you feel if you are second again tomorrow? Um. We've sort of spoken a little bit about results, and it, it's not so much about that. It's not it's not willing the perfect performance. Um, you don't have to be perfect, but it is about how we want to operate as a side, um, and that's been the case throughout this tournament. We've tried to adjust to conditions as best we could, and, and we've been uh, fairly effective in, in doing that, and we want to be uh, good at that again come tomorrow, and we want to focus on the tasks that are at hand for us to play our best cricket, um, and the end point is the end point. Do you feel you're the underdogs, and does that give you more impetus to just go out there and try harder? We, <laughs> a lot of people say that on a number of occasions, which is great, and I think um, you know, England rightly so deserve to, to be favourites. I think coming into this tournament from the start, they were favourites, and they've been playing really good cricket. Um, but whatever dog we are, um, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's just important that we focus on, on the cricket that we want to play and we've seen over the years that, um, you know, that anybody can beat anybody um, regardless of a breed of dog. <laughs> Chris, can those of us who have been lucky enough to go to New Zealand know how lovely you guys are as, as a people, um, but how would it feel tomorrow being the party poopers at Lord's? <laughs> party poopers? Um, you're talking about dogs again, eh? <laughs> Underdogs. Um, yeah. Oh, look, we, we're uh, we're really looking forward to to the occasion, and like I say, the the end point and the result. Um, yeah, there's a lot of time between now and and that point, so focusing too much on it, I don't think, is a is a positive thing. And the focus for us as a group is what's in front of us. And we know you go into any match, and you have to deal with a number of different things, whether it's different moments of pressure, whether it's different moments of momentum, um, and we have to be prepared to deal with all of those again. Are you guys getting a sense of how big this is back home in, in New Zealand? Um, yeah, I mean, we've seen uh, a, a lot of support come through, which is, which is awesome. Um, I suppose the last World Cup was, was at home, and uh, a lot of the attention was sort of there on your doorstep, and we had... Uh, crowds of Kiwis coming to every game and obviously we're playing at home which was um, which was really special and, and over here we've got a, a few uh, scattered um, in amongst um, the majority of opposition crowds um, but that's that's great as well and I know we're getting a lot of support from uh, from a long way off this huge expectation on England and pressure you might say can that work for you yeah um, don't know really. We just uh, have to turn up tomorrow, and we'll have to see what unfolds. Um, it's nothing promises in this game. Everybody has different bits of pressure, and how you treat it can be a big part of that. Um, but you know, I would probably have to say that that England are focused on the cricket that they want to play, whether they're favourites or not, uh, and we're focused on the cricket that we want to play as well. So the pressure's off you. Though. Oh, well, we're quite keen on winning as well, so <laughs> um, I think there's all different bits of pressure on on anybody, um, you know, whether you're favourites or not. You seem to be a lot more you seem to be a lot more relaxed today um, than before the India game. 
uh, are you? Um, and secondly, why do you think... When did we hang out before the Indian game? <laughs> and, and secondly, why do you think you and the team will have an edge over England? Why do we... Why do you think you, you and the team will have an edge over England? Why do we think we have the edge? We don't um, really think that in particular. We're just focusing on the, the sort of cricket that we want to play. Um, and hopefully that that sort of performance, um, despite being a final or a semi-final or a must-win or a five-match series, um, we still want to be putting out a, a strong performance that gives ourselves the best chance, whether it's you want to win something more than, than another day. Um, I don't think that's always helpful, so peeling it back, coming back to the performance uh, or the, the small moments, mucking in as a group, um, which is something we've done well throughout this campaign, um, working together, uh, you know, are all parts of, of what we need to try and achieve tomorrow. Kane, sorry, you always seem fairly level-headed, whatever the situation of the game is, whatever the, the state of the match is. Is that something you had to learn as a player, or has that just always been your approach? Uh, I, I think forever learning. Um, you know, you're just constantly having so many different experiences, and, uh, you know, the sport that we play, there, there's so many uncontrollables that you need to try and deal with and that, that is a real challenge at times. Um, so it's, uh, like I say, it's forever learning. Um, learning about the game and about yourself and different emotions that you can feel. But, you know, as a group, it, for us it is important that we are level in how we operate um, and keep peeling it back to what's important. Move under down the back. Uh, kia ora Kane. Um, you speak about not being at home and the competition not on your doorstep, but Lords does hold a very special place to you and the Black Caps. So, how do you wrap your mind around that in such, you know, on a big stage, on a grand final? And what are the conversations you have as a captain to try and keep minds um, sound? I suppose. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's a, a really special place to, to play cricket on any day. Um, but I guess with the added attention of a, a World Cup final, means it's perhaps a little bit more special than another day, um, which is great. And that, you know, the guys are, are really excited at the, the prospect tomorrow and, and going out there and, and playing the sort of cricket that we want to play. And um, in terms of conversations with other guys, guys have been having chats um, on, on a number of occasions, which is, which is cool. And you know, I can say that they're just really excited at, at looking forward to, to going out to tomorrow and, and taking on what's a, a really strong England side. Um, Owen Morgan's been quite open about his England team taking inspiration from the way New Zealand played in 2015. Um, is that a massive compliment or is it annoying because they've become so good off, off the back of that? Yeah, whether they... Well, if he said that, that's, you know, that's kind or whatever it is, it's, it's great. But I think in the last World Cup, you know, which was perhaps seen as a negative, is... I think a, a real catalyst for the changes that they've made and the, the force that they are and, and how they're playing their cricket, certainly in, in the white ball format. And you know, I think Owen's been a, a massive part in, in changing that. And you know, rightly so, they're now ranked number one in the world. So um, they, they deserve uh, all of those good parts that come with that. Um, and they've been playing really good cricket. You know, and, it's always a tough one. You don't tend to just change the way you play. You also need to work with, well, very much work with the group that you have and try and make adjustments accordingly to get the best out of the, the personnel that you have at the time, and that's forever changing. But they certainly made some, some strong changes really quickly, and you know, they've, they've been playing really good white ball cricket for a long time. Uh, we know that England prefer really good batting surfaces. This one looks quite green. Is that encouraging to you guys? Um, perhaps encouraging to seam bowlers on both sides. Um, but we, we don't know what uh, the wicket has in store. It's still a, a bit of time between now and the start of play. And um, I haven't had a close look at it just yet because we've just arrived. But um, usually a, a fairly fair surface here. Um, but I, I think at the same time, one that guys need to adapt quickly to, like any other surface that we've seen in the World Cup. Uh, Kane, you've just mentioned uh, adapting quickly and assessing conditions seems to be something you guys have done really well through the tournament. Uh, is that down to the sort of variety of conditions you have to face back at home? And how much courage does it take against a, a powerhouse batting lineup like India or England to go, we're settling for 240? Yeah, it's, it is a challenge. Um, you know, I think turning up most teams 
having played here before, um, expected perhaps scores to be a lot higher than, than what we've seen. But um, uh, the reality of it is that they have been quite tough surfaces and uh, there's been surfaces that have aged um, throughout perhaps a, a match on one day. So trying to make those adjustments are, are really important. Um, and I think if you're focusing on what you need to try and do as a group in the cricket that you want to play, then making those adjustments like in the last game, we, I think both sides looked at the surface, thought it was a really good one. Um, I thought perhaps 300 and something was, was what was going to be at play. But uh, after sort of 15 overs or so, so, we're having conversations thinking this is really quite difficult and 300 looks like a, a long, long way away. So if we're able to perhaps achieve something um, a little bit more realistic on that surface, then, then that gives you every chance um, to, to win the matches. And you know, we've, we've done it on a number of occasions, but we're going to have to be... Um, you know, good at doing that tomorrow and you know, surfaces at times have been hard to read, um, especially with the preempted ideas of what most teams came into the World Cup with, which is very, very high scoring and perhaps tough work for the bowlers. Um, bowlers have, uh, I think, enjoyed themselves a little bit. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow is a, a new challenge, uh, a fresh occasion where we'll need to make those adjustments quickly. Made, a lot has been made over here of what an England World Cup win would do for English cricket. But what do you think a first World Cup win for New Zealand would do for cricket for you in that country? Yeah, I mean, it, look, it, it obviously, ha well, I'd like to think it would have a really positive impact on the sport in our country. And having played in the previous one and being in the final there, um, it still had a, a massive impact in, in terms of perhaps inspiring kids to get involved in the game, which at the end of the day, when you move past, a, a number of different parts of the professional game that is kind of why you do it and hopefully uh, there's a, a lot of kids out there that have been enjoying the sort of cricket that we've been playing and you know appreciate you know a lot of the hard work that's gone into to being here now but but also really excited at, at watching a final with uh, with their team in it so you know it would be a, a really special thing no doubt in last World Cup, we saw McCullum and Gaptil charge the fast bowlers, set the tone right at the start. This World Cup, we are seeing Roy and Basto do that to a lot of oppositions. They target bowlers. Given the form of your openers, the hot and cold nature of Martin Gaptil and the other opener, do you think you're going to target, do you guys, will you guys target uh, certain bowlers in the England ranks in the first 10 overs, set the tone, maybe make a statement there? Do you think that is going to be the critical part here? Um, yeah, it's, it's, look, it's impossible to say at this point in time because we, we just don't quite know what the surface has in store and what a, a good total is uh, for the team batting first or, or the team bowling first. So um, yeah, there's too many unknowns to uh, predict any of those things, but I think the thing we do know is we come here tomorrow, um, all that's happened before doesn't really matter and it's all about the performances both teams want to put out on the day.